Home Assistant 2024.2 is about to drop, and while I wouldn't say this one is as exciting as some of the recent ones, there are five changes you need to be aware of if you want to keep automating the boring stuff. In this video, we're not talking new stuff. Some of my fellow content creators already have you covered on that. This video is focused on backwards incompatible changes, which in some cases are going to temporarily break your smart home. I said temporarily. Okay, this one isn't so much a change, but a removal. And I'm not sure this one is going to be a surprise. From my understanding, the Life360 integration has been failing for some time. But if for some reason you're hanging on to hope, it's time to give up. We've reached the point where trying to engineer around Life360's attempts to lock down their API is just no longer worth the effort. Especially when you can get all of the same stuff from the Home Assistant Companion app. So if you haven't already given up on Life360 in the past few weeks, 2024.2 is going to remove that integration from your system for you. This one only impacts Lutron users, but it is what I would call a breaking change. Because if you are in this boat, you're going to have some things that won't work after the update. Although inconvenient change is probably a better descriptor. The issue this change is trying to solve is any device that was a fan in the Lutron app showed up as a light entity inside of Home Assistant, which meant you used light domain services like light turn on to control these devices. So this change will correct the entity balance and change any Lutron fan entities that are showing up as part of the light domain to the fan domain. This will change the entity ID, which means any dashboards might need to be updated and the action or service you call in existing automations, scripts and scenes will need to be updated to use the fan domain services. This is one that you really can't do prior, so just be ready. Given how important knowing whether people in your smart home are coming or going, this one is going to be major. Um, actually it's less than 2% Wait, of the user base. what? That can't be right. Hang on, let me check. Only 1.9% of users are using the proximity integration. What the fuck? Anyway, proximity is deprecated as of 2024.2 and is going to be removed in an upcoming release. For the 1% of you that have mastered presence detection and automations using this proximity integration, then don't panic. The idea is not being removed, proximity sensors will remain. What is being removed is the proximity domain. The current entities are going to be migrated to the sensor domain to reflect the reality that they are in fact a sensor. It's a good change. So Good change. So instead of an entity named proximity dot, they will be changing to a sensor dot entity in a future release. So this is more of a warning, most likely to give the other 99% of you time to get going with the proximity integration. <laughs> Seriously, the proximity integration is extremely useful in presence based automations, because while a device tracking entity can tell you that someone is one mile away, the proximity sensor can tell you if that person is moving away or towards your house which can be an important distinction when trying to automate things and you want to filter out some of that GPS noise. If you use the official Tuya integration, your life will be getting easier with 2024.2. The authentication method for the official core integration is changing, so you'll no longer need to create and maintain a developer account. So say goodbye to having to renew that free developer account every once in a while. This one is somewhat a breaking change in that once you update, you'll get a repair notice when everything comes back up. And you'll need to go through the new authentication process to get your Tuya devices working again. Until you do that, you're not going to be able to use any of your Tuya devices. But don't worry, it's way easier than the current method and will most likely be demoed during the release party. So be sure to tune into that on Wednesday. Once you reauthenticate, everything will be as it was, minus the renewing the dev account stuff. This doesn't change anything for those of you using the local Tuya integrations. So if you are using one of those, you will still need your dev account in order to get the local key information from the API. And finally, webhooks. If you watched my video a long time back on webhook changes back in 2023.7, this release, 2024.2, makes the local only option for webhooks the default. This won't impact any of your current webhooks you have, 
but any new web hooks you create will be local only by default. Meaning if you need to access them from outside the network your Home Assistant instance is on, you'll need to make sure that you'd click the cog and uncheck local only. If you want a refresher on webhooks or want to know more, check the description for the link to that previous video. This is, of course, not the complete list of changes to be aware of with 2024.2. And all jokes aside, there are some things in this release that people are going to get excited about. So check out my fellow content creators who will no doubt be doing the videos on their favorite 2024.2 features. And of course, be sure to come by and hang out at the release party on Wednesday. And with that, I wish you and your family a happy Home Assistant release day.